Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, welcome to Silver Stetson. Uh, I will be your host, mostly attractive, and with me, as always, is noted Tao enthusiast, Whoa! Mike Magus. Sorry, Nick, Nick, Nicholas Ali, uh, Ali decided to almost kill himself. Ali eating the curb is a different sport, sir. And that is that is usually reserved for the skateboarding. Correct. Uh, so, Mike, tell me. This is a new series, he said, reading off the paper. Uh, <laughs> what can you tell me to inform the viewers through me about Tuxedo Duran and, his, <laughs> uh, and your boy in the thing? <laughs> this is our new multi-class series with Chevrolet Daytona prototypes, which are the cars with the blue kind of slash beside them. That's them. And then further down, we have the... GT4s, which are the BMWs, the Lotuses, a Porsche. I think there might be a KTM somewhere. I don't think I, I could be wrong on that. Hopefully not, because the KTM here would be really, really bad. Uh, anyways, these two cars are drastically different. As you can see, the gap is about 20 seconds a lap between them. It's uh, it's huge. Today we have a 40-minute race and a 20-minute race around Silverstone, and. Uh, as it is the opening round, there is no points uh, established and uh, no championship leader as a result. But right now, Martin Edmonds is at the top of the pile, which, uh, spoiler. Well, not even a spoiler. I don't think that's going to last because there's a certain guy that, in the field here today that you might have heard of. His name is Caleb, and uh, he comes. Hey. <laughs> you call a fucking special K back on the case. Mm hmm. Sean Kenny with two purple sectors there through the first and second sector, so he looks like he might have a run at pole position here. <laughs> He's going to go manipulate the pole. He is going to go manipulate the poles. He clears through some GT4 traffic and uh, unfortunately did not get the pole position there, possibly because of that traffic. Here is Nicholas yeah. Ollie again. Oh, somebody off. Yeah, it's a guy. Probably a dude. It was thing. either Dave Nelson or Guido De Palma. They're running the same car, so as a result, I cannot be 100% sure which one it is. Nicholas Ali, of course, part of the Argentine invasion that we got here today with, of course, Nicholas Ali and Guido De Palma. And there's a guy that's going to show up later named Juan Juan Reina. And there's a guy from Uruguay named Marcelo Giordano. Marcelo Suarez. I mean, that would also work. Indeed. So, Mike, I have uh, decanted the second jug of my prison hooch here. Mm. So I drank the entire jug of the cup and a half of sugar and stuff yesterday. It was very dry. Uh, not a lingering sweetness. A uh, lot more alcohol in there than I thought. Um, and by the time I had drunk a bunch of it, I uh, had gone too far immediately. You uh, you underestimated the uh, the potency of your indeed brew. very much so. So this is the <laughs> batch that has two and a half cups of sugar in it, and the batch that has two cups of sugar is still fermenting. It's still going. So I am going to live here before the race sample this stuff, uh, watching the sides of the glass as I tilt it. The angel's legs are very apparent. So there are there am some alcohol in this. Let's see. Mm, definitely sweeter, much sweeter than the other. And I think probably more alcohol. Wow, this might need some ice. <laughs> it's uh that's uh it's definitely some potent stuff. You know it's potent when Byron says it might need ice. <laughs> yes. I think I'm gonna go uh while people are fiddle fucking around here right before the race, I'm gonna go get myself a couple of cubes. I will be right back. I'm gonna have a pit Sounds stop good. before the race. Because I'm Sounds smart. Good. Sounds good. Take notes, racers. <laughs> Martin Hughes trying to get a last lap here. He does have a personal best in Sector 2, so he might have something here. It's impossible to tell with those gaps because, uh, let's see, come to the line, come to the line. Pardon me, is Joaquin Juanarena takes pole for the G. Oh, never mind, he spun. All right, so top five in the in the prototype category, Caleb Gonzalez, Maximilian Rossi, Maxim Maximiliano Rossi, Sean Kenny, Nicholas Ali, and... 
Martin Edmonds, and in the GT4 category, it is Joaquin Juan Arena, Guido De Palma, an all Argentine front row, followed by Tony Santa Clara, Zifo, aka Tuxedo Duran, and Sergio Mengual. Tuxedo Turban. Ooh, that's that's good. That's good. That's like his Middle Eastern brother. Indeed. Yeah, this is uh, this stuff kicks pretty good. It's uh, definitely got the burn, but it's also got the sweetness. Uh, we'll see what the two cups taste like maybe on another uh, race commentary. Mm, everyone should look forward to that. Indeed they should. Or else. Grid is forming up here for the first of our two races here at Silverstone. 40 minutes around the track. Uh, and the uh, the starting report was released for this, and there was only one penalty for the whole race. So looking forward to some clean action here. I am not. Well, you're not, because you, you enjoy the carnage. You're, you, you, <laughs> you, you just want to see the world burn. Some people just want to set a truckload of money on fire. I am not one of those people. <laughs> All right, here we go. And it looks like Caleb Gonzalez has gotten off to the best start there. And Martin Edmonds is up to, well, briefly was up to fourth place. Now he's back to fifth place, de demoted by Nicholas Ali. Caleb the Great Gonzo Gonzalez. Mm hmm. And our boy Sean Kenny in third place. Get him, Kennethan. He's driving that Red Devil Gainsco car, which is always fun. Red Marcelo, Devil Marcelo Giordano, Ar Ariel Zatoni, Max Simmons, John Barker, Valentino Rossi, your top 10. Oh, yes, that's much nicer with some ice in it. Much, uh, much smoother. We have a Valentino Rossi and a Maximiliano Rossi. That's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of them is going to be to the millions, and the other one's going to be uh, deported to uh, Milano. Michael Magus either defending from James Butler or taking the spot from him. Honestly, can't remember which. <laughs> Both. As they head into the... Uh, the most interesting part of the track is, of course, Silverstone has many different layouts. This is the historic layout. We just did an ACC race here at the same track, and that particular section right there, very different between the two games, and that was uh, was throwing me off. I know that much. <laughs> Have you thought about maybe just racing trophy trucks? If we could find a game with the trophy trucks, we, we would be there, sir. We would be with you. Indeed. In the, in the meantime, I'm just going to uh, insist upon it regularly. No, this is fair enough. You hear that, game developers? Trophy trucks, make it happen. Simulated trophy trucks. That cannot be anything less than hilarious. Mm-hmm. Bring us just, just bring us just everything that Robbie Gordon has ever come up with, because frankly, that's that's great. Robbie Gordon Simulator. I don't know who that is, but I assume he's a cool guy. He's a race car driver. Uh, I don't know about being a cool guy because he says some things that are like not very politically friendly, like women can't race at one point. That was a bit interesting. Okay, maybe not total simulation. But uh, but uh, he uh, he does have a mind for coming up with crazy things. There was this thing called a uh, race of champions (ROC) back in the day. Still goes around these days, but it's a little bit lesser event. Where you basically get the best drivers from various disciplines to come and race. And Robbie Gordon's always like, and we are going to race these fuckers. And they're like, how the hell do we race that? Well, you see, the <laughs> suspension is incredibly lively. So it just goes all the way down, baby. <laughs> hell yeah. So it'll be like Team Canada versus Team USA sort of thing. Or Team Europe, Team Young Stars. Whatever they can come up with. And there's always some like weird hosting country. Like one time they did it in um, in the Bahamas, so there was Team Bahamas, and I'm like, I don't know any Bahamian drivers. This will be a thing. <laughs> Get Eve Edwards to do it. Would make sense. He'd go around kicking people while driving past them. Pretty much. Always have faith in Eve Edwards. He did that spinning knockout of Josh the Punk Thompson, which, given Josh the Punk Thompson's very very. Um, traditional views was probably a good thing. <laughs> Excellent. Actually, it's weird. The MMA community for a long time thought Josh Thompson was gay, and then 
we learned his thoughts on the gaze and uh, turned things around real quick. <laughs> I had never heard that about him. Uh, I just assumed that he was metrosexual. He is very metrosexual. Valentino Rossi on the tail of Max Simmons going down the inside. Contact. Put him in the wall. I think yeah, there's a third. Baby. Get him. Get him. Get him. I was going to say, I thought there was a third car there, but there was not. It was just more contact between Simmons just and all Rossi. That carnage. Indeed. Things are getting physical here early. Uh, it should be mentioned that I do not believe Rossi is actually missing the rear wheels as is pictured there. Uh, if I recall correctly from my replay, he had like a ping spike, and sometimes the ping spike kind of takes your wheels away. You keep saying Rossi, and I keep thinking Criminal Minds. That's true. That's I true. just assume he looks like Joe Montaigne. All hail David Rossi. Correct. And his the, pinky ring. The king of smooth. Yavor, my dear. As uh, Nicholas Ali overtakes uh, Sean Kenny and makes it an all South American podium right now. At least in the prototypes, it's almost that in the uh, GT4 class, although there isn't a there isn't a third South American to help uh, Juan Urena and DePalm out, though. <laughs> Martin Edmonds on the tail of Sean Kenny. In the the legendary battle, the, the timeless battle of Sean Kenny versus Martin Edmonds here. And you know what? Sean always, mostly, sometimes has the odd victory. I'd say Sean probably is up on the uh, on the historical series. Oh, I did not know that. Probably. I feel like he's a little bit more of an accomplished driver than Martin. Martin just has the attendance. Whereas Sean sometimes goes AWOL. And sometimes he goes into AWOL. Well, we all go into AWOL every once in a while. <laughs> what are you guys wasting all that time for? Just cut right across. It's faster. Is, is he legal? You say illegal, I say stifling creativity. <laughs> you say boring. Here's here's how you fix this. You ready? Ramps. You put mm. ramps where the curbs are, so if you go too fast into a curb, you just fly off the track. Literally. Oh, so, some of the curbs are effectively ramps. There was a... Uh... I was watching the F3 and F2 races earlier today, and I can't... I think it was the F2 race where Yehan Daruvala went wide in one of the corners at uh, Red Bull Ring and actually went full-on airborne. It's pretty fucking hilarious. That sounds entertaining as fuck. I'm, I'm sure his, his engineers and mechanics weren't happy about it, but, you know, it made me laugh. <laughs> so, as the... It's even, uh, it's even better, because he's driving the Red Bull car, so it's Red Bull gives you wings, motherfuckers! <laughs> So on the, uh, the the tradition of going completely off topic and not paying attention to the race, uh, I heard today that a bunch of stuff has happened to Will Smith. Do you have any information? I have not heard this. Uh, apparently, just like all kinds of stuff. Uh, maybe his Whoa. wife is cheating, and Alex his kids Sluka are going off. his kids are like way out of bounds, and like who the fuck knows. I mean, and his also, kids, he might be he, having an affair as well. His kids being out of bounds would not be terribly surprising, because, I mean, Correct. celebrity celebrity kids, it's a and, thing that happens. <laughs> and Will Smith's kids being Will Smith's kids. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, he might be uh, cheating as well, so fuck, who knows? I mean, it feels like they're both cheating on each other, and, you know, it just, it just evens out. Correct. I don't know. I don't, I don't really... I don't really get into the Hollywood gossip, basically. No, but I mean, when somebody of the stature of Will Smith, all kinds of stuff happens. Uh, somebody's got a pretty good one here. Uh, somebody's like, what happened? His life got flipped, turns upside down. His wife was up to no good, started fucking guys up in the neighborhood. She whistled for a man when he came near, and she jumped up in his lap and started nibbling his ear. <laughs> <laughs> Solid, actually. I, <laughs> I guess they I can't hate on that. I guess the word entanglement has been thrown around in this whole situation. So the next line is, if anything, you could say entanglement was rare, but I said, nah, forget your hoes having an affair. I'm dying. <laughs> it is pretty solid. Pretty solid. Pretty solid. People are putting the bars down, that is for sure. 
the meantime in the race, Caleb Gonzalez still leads, and uh, they are making their way through the uh, the GT4 field for the first time. Whoa, Mr. Rossi, the, the track is uh, not that way, sir. Well, it could be that way if they designed it better. For the I convenience mean, of, you know, everyone. You're not wrong. <laughs> It's going to be messy getting through the through the traffic here. A big part of these races is honestly going to be very much decided on who can get through traffic safely and the most efficient way possible. And most of the GT4s appear to be very accommodating about this. Which they kind of have to be. The pay oh, I, I say yes. that and Rossi hits the back of Saluko. Headbutts for everybody. A little bit of a problem there. Nothing too bad happened, but not great. <laughs> to follow that up, apparently there's some kind of comments here, like they've had an open relationship for years, something, something. I'm like, I don't really believe that, but okay. All, all I've ever seen is like him treating her like a queen at like uh, gala releases and red carpets and stuff, and that's all I've ever seen from that relationship. But I don't really pay attention that much either, so... Yeah, that, never, I think that'll be really the, the final comment on the whole Will Smith situation, unless it gets funnier. <laughs> yeah, I never particularly thought about it, to be honest. So, Rossi has been dropped down to third place behind Nicholas Ali, and that is taking the pressure off Caleb Gonzalez in a big way, who is quite a ways ahead now. We saw Rossi get off the track, but that was not what cost him the position. Oh, Ali! Well, never mind. Rossi's back into second place and Sean Kenny back out of the podium for a brief minute before Martin Edmonds takes it from him. He says, I'm going to rain on your parade. I'm going to piss in your Wheaties. Jen's Paul for references for 300, please. Bingo, bingo. Sugar in the gas tank. Your ex-husband strikes again. <laughs> Nicholas Ali's car is all kinds of out of control in some of these corners. He is really putting it to the absolute limit. Nick Ali, reckless is he, something, something about what? <laughs> All right, so it is Gonzalez, Frazzi, Edmonds, Kenny, Giordano, now the top five in the prototype category. In the GT category, it is Juan Urena, De Palma, Santa Clara, Duran, and Magus. The BMWs towards the front of the GT category with James Butler, the top non-BMW in that, that ugly, ugly Porsche, which, by the way, he said he's going to change the car, Byron. Just for you. Good. As well he should. Golf oil all the way. I think it's I think it's more the fact that he can't drive the Porsche. It's really <laughs> I uh, I ain't seen no golf oil in quite some time, so uh, I may have to just uh, for formally protest uh, everything. Uh, no words, just kind of like. Well, growl. there's one in the, there's one in the ACC series, but of course that is not our commentary duty. That is. Heir to Tobin and uh, Cole McRae's uh, gig. Good old Tobinder. Heir to Tobin, by the way, complaining that we have to raise Monza this week. Uh, muffin. <laughs> well, joke's on you, because I just switched to Macau. How you like that? Whoa! Ollie off the Heel. track again! Problems Sorry. there in the background also, I think, for Dave Nelson. Marcelo Giordano, what flag is that? Uh, that is Uruguay. Ah, uh, see, if there were two of them, they could be Paraguay. Mm, different flag, though. That's the joke. <laughs> Got the heavy South American invasion for this series. Wait, it's in South America, but it's Uruguay. <laughs> no e. <clears throat> Giordano getting a little bit. Getting a little physical with one of the GT cars there. I'm not sure if that's advisable for these prototypes. They are much lighter and therefore more likely to uh, come out on the on the bad end of that. Anybody who thinks I don't know geography, I'd like to point you back to the Paraguay joke I made first. Mm -hmm. Byron knows his <laughs> geography. I think the only time the only time we got st we really got stumped was the the Guyana location. We both thought it was Africa for some reason, and it's uh, yeah, it is South America. Wait, isn't it Africa? No, South America. <laughs> <laughs> so we fa we failed there. In our in our defense, though, the guy from Guyana is Douglas de Groot, which I mean, that's a Dutch, very Dutch name. It's a very Dutch name, and that usually means that like you know Africa. But uh, correct, the southeast of Africa's. 
That being said, you got Vandalay Silva. That's that's a Dutch name, if memory serves. Not the Silva part, but the Vandalay part. And, uh... Can we, can we convince, uh... your boy, the Nups, to change his name to Vandalay? Mm. Axe Murder OP. Michael mm-hmm. Magus here leading a train with James Butler on his tail along with Sergio Menguel and Martin Hughes. Martin doing quite well today. That's good to see. He's in eighth place in the GT category, former ESR Academy driver. He is the uh, the very interesting BMW livery back there at the back of his pack. What do you think about that livery there, Byron? The the light blue and the, the white and the orange? Oh, I didn't get it's a good look neat. at it. I'll have to have a look. Uh, it's it's kind of neat. It's got kind of like a 3D effect going on it, which is interesting. Womp, womp, womp. That basically, that's what everybody should have on their hood, is something that's so mind-bendingly weird that if you look in your rearview mirror and see it, then it makes the guy ahead of you drive off the track. I mean, they kind of do that with the anime cars in ACC. <laughs> it's like, look in your rearview mirror. There are tits! Whoa. <laughs> Giggity. John that's... Beach, a dirty, dirty boy. Oh, uh, that, that, car, that, that uh, is the car pad, yeah. Drive uh, faster, Butler! We ride with James Butler, Martin Hughes just ahead of him. That was the car I was going to call, but everyone keeps beating me to it. Not Butler's car. The, the one Hughes has got. <laughs> Marcelo Giordano still running in fifth place behind Sean Kenny. Does the name Giordano have like negative connotations for you because of the uh, Calgary Flames defenseman? Uh, no. Calgary Flames suck. Never affected me whatsoever. But they have been to a Stanley Cup more recently than both the Vancouver Canucks and Toronto Maple Leafs. Listen, everybody's won like multiple Stanley Cups other than the Maple Leafs. Even Vancouver. That is not true. <laughs> Vancouver's won way more Stanley Cups than Toronto. That's that's not that is blatantly not true. Not true. I, I this know only, this. Only one team has more, I think. Sadly, that's Montreal. Ugh. Yeah, I like Montreal when I was a kid. Montreal was great. Toronto was kind of the ugly stepbrother. I grew up a Maple Leafs fan because, I mean, you know, I live here. But uh, to be honest, more just the the Maple Leafs fans more like turn me off the team. Like, it's not even the team that turned me off the team. It's just dumbass fans. <laughs> you know, there was one one guy that almost had me a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Wendell motherfucking Clark. Wendell Clark was great. He was my favorite player back in the day. You called him Wendy with respect. Mm-hmm. You did, like, everybody called him Wendy. And everybody respected the hell out of him. And you, like, I never heard anybody say, <laughs> call him Wendy and not almost, like, you can hear the sir in the background of that statement. <laughs> mm-hmm. You want none of Wendell Clark, my friend. <laughs> None of that. And then they got Domi. Mm-hmm. We got Wendy and Domi, and it was a good connection. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Toronto's put through a number of, like, you know, good players that I've enjoyed cheering for over the years, but just I can't stand the other fans. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, they're all from Toronto. Tends to be the case. Uh, now that I think about it, the only Toronto sports teams that I support are... Um, well, there's the Wolf Pack because, I mean, what other, what other rugby options do I have? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, no then, and then the Raptors. That's about it. Yeah, Raptors are never going to win a championship. They did, huh? That's the joke. Kawhi Leonard, baby. And then he left. And then he opted out. <laughs> out. I am not sure how to say this guy's name. I'm going to go with an MLS player that has the same spelling as that. I'm going to assume that that is the correct saying for the name. I'm going to go with Pajoto. And then, yeah, it was Pajoto. Um, so that's what I'm going with. He is catching up to the very damaged looking car of Alexander Saluko. So that is uh, going to be an interesting fight. I hope he had his Pajot meal. And in fact, uh, well, never mind. Saluko just got a drive through for Whoa. track limit abuse. So. Rough day. Did you stop suplexing your computer? No, that was my roommate closing the door because I'm too loud. Well, he could just uh, wear some earphones. 
I mean, they're probably going to bed, so it's fair enough. It's seven o'clock. It's, it's ten thirty here. <laughs> oh, that's the new. That's the car right there. That is. Uh, that is the car right there. Yeah. I uh, would love to see it. Well, now you get uh, to see the inside. <laughs> I got to see a half second of it. Yeah. It looks all right. I'm, I'm reasonably down with that. Yeah, there's another one kind of similar to that as well, but it's not on the track today. They look. They look very interesting. It's. A, it's kind of like a high tech livery. It's very interesting. Indeed. Martin Hughes battling with Michael Magus here for the, well, frankly, the non-Spanish-speaking crown in GT, because the top four are <laughs> two Argentinians and two Spaniards. Signed in the New Orleans airport bathroom. Wash your hands like you just ate crawfish and you need to take your contacts out. Mm -hmm. Solid. Solid. We'll get people. That'll get people. So Martin Hughes still working on Michael Magus here. Battle for fifth position in the GT4 category. And I imagine a pretty high ranking spot because I know that uh, De Palma, Juan Ureno, Santa Clara, and I believe even Zivo Duran are all technically going to do a part-time season. So Magus and Hughes, who are doing the full-time season, might really be battling over a championship lead right now, effectively. But... Nicholas Ali on the tail of Marcelo Giordano. Oh, somebody going in the pit lane background. That was, I think, Alexander Saluko. He got that drive through penalty, and that does match the livery that he is running. So probably in to serve his, uh, his naughty boy track cutting penalty. Nick Ali, fast as a cheetah. Some, that doesn't work. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll workshop that one. We'll figure something out. Oh no! John Peach had disqualified for ignoring a drive through penalty. He got squoze out. Oh, that's that's very sad. That is very, very sad. I think, actually, we, we may have lost Sergio Manguel at some point because he is two laps down, which makes me suspect that he is, in fact, out of this race. And thus, the, lo the Lotus... Uh, whoa! Nicholas Ali getting into the back of Javier Perez Torres there. That's a little rude. Zifo Duran. molest Javier P. That's my job. Zifo Duran trying to get on the podium here against Tony Santa Clara. Going down the inside here into Brooklyn's, but Santa Clara defends hard. Shuts that door close. Is Santa Clara from Santa Barbara? Probably not, but maybe. Maybe it is Tony, literally just Tony from Santa Clara. Could be, could be. Tony St. Clair. Mm. Sounds like a porn name. Kind of. I mean, I'm pretty sure the, the biggest porn name I've ever met is a guy I've known since elementary school whose name is Johnny Steele. Nice. Just, you know, very much a porno name. Those those parents knew what the hell they were doing. Mm. And his brother Gregory, who is allergic to everything. I think that you're gonna have to change that last name to like aluminum. <laughs> Gregory Pot Metal. It's hyphenated. Seriously, Gregory couldn't come over to like anyone's house. It's like allergic to cats, dogs, and like all kinds of pets. It's like Jesus Christ. Hombre en fuego. Luis Pajoto. Trying to take the spot away from Javier Perez Torres, but Javi shuts the door on him. A lot of Spanish on Spanish battles going on right now. Is the Spanish Civil War? A little bit. Caleb Gonzalez continues to lead pretty comfortably from Max Rossi and Martin Edmonds. With Sean Kenny, Marcel Giordano, and it is Hughes has got that fifth place away from Magus. Mag is trying to come back at him here through... Trying to figure out where we are right now. On the racetrack, Silverstetson. Did I did I tell it in the intro? <laughs> I mean, specifically, we're on the track. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's no minimap, I can't tell you. I believe this is cops that they had just gone through. Well, they're going way too fast. They're all going to get pulled over. Nicholas Ali, once again, traffic is in the way of the leaders as they head into, I believe, Brooklyn's and Luffield. And Martin Ed Martin Hughes has lost spot to Mike Magus. 
Got down Get the him. inside. Yeah, if you're playing along at home, every time the caster mentions himself in the third person, you have to drink. Actually, it was Abby that Magus was catching him in, in, not cops. Abby that's, and cops look very drinks. similar. As Hughes goes very wide there. And that, for the time being, will alleviate the pressure on hey man. Canada's, Canada's own Michael Magus. Hey, man, no turn shaming. You can't do that. Like, you just, it's not okay to just call corners wide and stuff anymore. You, like, come on. I didn't say the corner was wide. I said it was a line was wide. Listen, I don't want to know. I don't want to hear your apologist nonsense. That's not apologies. I'm, assault, I'm just saying. I'm assaulting the line, Sir. not the corner. <laughs> Sir, it's not going to look good in the press briefing. Sean Kenny all over the back of Martin Edmonds. So this fight is not over for the podium. And uh, English bragging rights for that third place. It ain't over till it's over. Now I gotta listen to that song. Oh, Marcelo Giordano has dropped back to seventh place. I don't know what happened to him. He's now on the tail of Ariel Zatoni. So he's lost out to two Argentinians. He cannot be happy with that being from Uruguay. All I know that is with a couple of ice cubes and this stuff, this this hooch is going down to way too smooth and way too fast, and I'm gonna have to like really back off. <laughs> well, that was Get very him. close. Get that was him. very oh. close. I'm just a Giordano. second and a half here behind. Giordano managing to get it slowed down. Oh, a little bit off to Elf Kilter there. Sean Kenny going wide. Dude, lot no of, corner shaming. A lot, lot of people struggling with the breaking point into Brooklyn's, which is interesting. Oh, it's easy. You just tap the brakes all the time, and then you don't go too fast around the corners. Somebody has spun around back there. That is a Lotus. That is a Pajoto. Uh, and uh, Javi Perez Torres promoted a spot as a result. Serious damage to that Lotus car, so it may not really play much of a role from this point onwards. I was going to say he's the only Lotus on the field, and then I looked down, and your boy the Mangler is also in one, but I think he's not racing anymore. Yeah, he appears to be out of this race along with Johnny Beach. Done got scores out. Back to Martin Hughes, who's trying to catch back up to Michael Magus. Sean Kenny has lost some serious ground to Martin Edmonds, and uh, Nicholas Ali in the background there in fifth place. Still coming hard. He would love to make that all South American podium a thing as we have Peruvian Caleb Gonzalez leading from the Argentine Max Rossi. Maximum Rossi. Maximum. Oh, I don't even want to know what Maximum Rossi, Rossi is. I think we need to have an all Martin team, an all Max team. Hmm. That would work. And an all Sean team for no reason. I feel like, I feel like Maximum Rossi, Rossi is just looking at you and you're pregnant. Boom, pregnant. <laughs> Whoa, Sean! No, Sean! No! Jonathan Kenningston. No, the Red Devil has squandered a chance at the podium. Nicholas Ali is overtaken Nick by Ali think. passed by the You Can Suck Dick. <laughs> that might be a little strong. We'll workshop that one, too. Ariel Zatoni coming up on Sean Kenny as well, who is still trying to get up back up to speed. We'll see if Kenny can hold on to fifth place. Not much in the way has changed since the last time I gave an update on the standings. Basically, it's just Sean Kenny has fallen back to fifth place. That's about it for the top five. And the great Gonzo is pretty good. Rossi's keeping up pretty well, respectively. But uh, between Rossi. second and third, not a good not a good look. Yeah, Rossi's been catching him up uh, actually the last two laps or so. That gap was up over six seconds at one point. He's got down to about four and a half. So it's not a bit of a charge, but uh, no real action yet. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time, though. Got 12 minutes to go. In the meantime, looking back at the GT standings, Juan Urena, who I don't think we've even seen this entire time, is up six seconds over Guido de Palma. Hey, Guido! Marcelo Giordano gets by Ariel Zatoni with a little bit of help from the lap traffic there. Not sure who that was. It was either Dave Nelson or Guido De Palma. 
we ever get anybody named George Nelson in here, I'm going to lose my shit. Mm. That's uh, Babyface Nelson's real name. Uh, mm. Also, if you ever watch Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? You'll know why I, that sticks in your head. Roger, roger. George Nelson, you tell him, not Babyface! Not really sure why we've decided to go to Martin Hughes here. He's not particularly close to Michael Magus. Because that the car. That, that car, car is very nice, though. That nice, a very nice car. And man, Ale every time Alexander Saluko appears on camera, that car just makes me. It hurts my soul a little bit. I didn't even notice. I'll have to keep an eye out. It's dented as it's dented as shit. <laughs> the, uh, oh. the 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 uh, the hood is like completely blocking the. Uh, the uh, the windshield almost. Oh, that's all right. Just switch into third person camera and you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, what I do is I usually hop onto the hood. And that like, will be dope. And it's like driving in. You can see the bugs from here. <laughs> Motor in. Pass you on the right. Stuff. I don't. Know, I don't have any more licks. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm not, I'm not really coming up with anything. Additional on that. Gonna start a fight. There we go. In the pits tonight. Oh, solid, solid. Motorhead. <laughs> Somebody, I don't know why any, that's got to exist. Somebody's got to have taken that song and made it into just a Motorhead tribute song. I would imagine so. If that doesn't exist, I feel that we may need to create it. You can see the heavily damaged Lotus in the background there of... Uh... Luis uh, Peugeot, uh, Peugeot with no uh, hood whatsoever. I'm in favor all, of it. It's weight saving. Ali is all over the back end of Martin Edmonds, and I think this has got to have Martin sweating a little bit more than Sean Kenny. There's just a more aggressive way that Ali is throwing the car into the corners here. As they're coming up to lap the prototype of Mauricio Delgado, who uh, just doesn't seem like he's been able to keep up today. He's that blue prototype up ahead of them, the Visit Florida car. Please don't. Please don't right now. <laughs> they got meth gators. They got pythons on steroids. They got Nile crocodiles loose in the bayou. For God damn, Florida is just a menagerie of cacophonies and catastrophes. Mm-hmm. American generals at pretty much at that point. They got giant pouched rats from Africa loose in the Keys. Yep. They don't even have Steve Irwin or they don't even have uh, Steve Irwin Steve Irwin to come save them anymore. They do not. Although Steve Irwin would just try and like collect them all and take them home. Yeah, yeah, but that would save them like inadvertently. <laughs> Correct, but I feel like a lot of these problems could be solved with shotguns. Probably. Oh, James Butler has uh, spun the car there. Coming off of uh, Love Field. So, bad news for the Porsche. Losing a spot to Javier Perez Torres. Martin Hughes is closed back within a second. And Michael Magus here, the battle for fifth place that is uh, on and up and going on for quite some time. Is that the, uh, the Russian driver, Igor Onanov? <laughs> we need a guy with that name. Well, I don't know if it's uh, on and off the track again. Are you saying that we should say on the top of things? Oh, very nice. I gotta watch Goldeneye. Mm, first Bond movie I ever saw. Uh, it wasn't the first Bond movie I ever saw, but it was the first one I saw in the theater. Whoa! Spin for Dave Nelson. Ding. Might have been contact with Michael Magus there. Under blue flag. Contract. Looks like he is okay, though, and continuing. Ali is still on the tail of Martin Edmonds. Hasn't hasn't shown him the uh, the nose at any point. Like no no significant move, but uh, just constantly in the mirror there. Talking about the racer in your mirror, asking him to change his lanes. Mm -hmm. Tonight's just a musical festival. A little bit.
Nick Ali gonna bump thee into the ballards. <laughs> Whoa, getting wide there. Bruh. Ali is using every bit of track here. Like, there's an aggressive language to this car that suggests if he gets close enough, he's going to go for it on Martin and, and be damned the consequences. I'm going to share a cursed image with Javier and see what his reaction is going to be. Terror. Actually, I'm not so much sure it's a cursed image, but uh, essentially, somebody has put hot dogs on to in taco hard taco shells and then put mm -hmm. toppings on top. Isn't that just a street taco? I mean, maybe in Hamburg. <laughs> oh, we're <laughs> getting a response. Oh my God, the GT4s just look standing still when the prototypes come racing up to them. And Nicholas Ali is all over Martin Edmonds. He wants through. He is starting to show him some weaving into maggots and beckets. This could be good. When prototypes come pitting in. When prototypes come pitting in. Oh, I want to be on that racetrack because I will pass them all because they're in the pits. That's true. Right, so Javi went to type something, stopped, has recovered himself, and is hopefully now we will get a response. <laughs> More traffic playing a role here for the battle between... Oh, God! Oh, that may have been Yikes. a glitch. That may have been a glitch. I don't know. It was a tornado. It was a localized air disturbance. <laughs> localized air disturbance for Nicholas Ali. If it wasn't, if it wasn't a glitch, then whoever that was, Guido De Palma or Dave Nelson, made an excellent recovery. We'll just put it that way. I believe it was De Palma because up ahead is uh, I want to say that is Joaquim ya uh, Juan Urena, who is the uh, the GT race leader. And that battle for the final step of the podium continues with just three and a half minutes to go here. Javier has responded with something about glizzies, which I haven't really understood. Apparently black people think hot dogs are dicks, and that's the new meme. Okay. It's, it's the really not great joke from Metalocalypse where... Uh, Murder face won't eat anything cylindrical shape because every, everything cylindrical shape might be a penis. I mean, fair enough. <laughs> won't eat bananas, no hot dogs, nothing like that. Fair enough, I guess. So, I, uh, and they call them glizzies, and I don't understand what that, I, it, it's not a good meme. It's pretty, it's pretty tacky, pretty lame. But I have asked him if he would put glizamole on top. And I have got a laugh Fair out of it. Fair enough. I mean, admittedly, a lot of the memes that go around are pretty terrible. Correct. In other, other news, I figured out I could put uh, WhatsApp on dark mode today. Hmm. I don't know if that helps anybody out there, but it's, it's a thing that exists. Look into it. Oh, here's someone we have not seen virtually the entire race. Richard DeRoche on the, ta on the tail of Ariel Zatoni here, battle for seventh place. Uh, just, I don't know, the camera's just kind of glossed over Richard so far today in the Wayland prototype. And we'll see if he can uh, get the job done here with uh, probably about one lap to go after this. I, I really doubt it because Ariel lives in Argentina and the rest of us live in Ar Arnt Argentina. So, I mean, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, the Wayland Corporation, isn't that from fucking Alien? Aren't they the bad guys from Alien? I believe it's spelt differently, but you are correct. Wayland Yutani Corp. Oh, uh, yeah, aren't the Yutanis like, uh, I, I believe if you look in the monster manual for D&D, &D, those are actually like serpent demons. Hmm. Charles Bishop Wayland. 
played, of course, by the great Lance Henriksen. Correct. In various incarnations, android, non-android, and human. And future human. Future human's the best kind of human, really. Lance Henriksen, of course, gets the uh, one of, is on that dubious list of guys who've been in Terminator, the Alien movies, and the Predator movies. He was on a show, wasn't he? Some kind of weird, like, conspiracy thing. Not that I recall, but possibly. I'm going to have to look into it. Somebody was. Might not have been him. I believe that the honor of going against the Predator and the Alien and the Terminator goes to Lance Henriksen and Bill Paxton. Correct. Bill Paxton, OP, RIP. As I think DeRoche got the job done against Tony there, although the camera cut away at an inopportune time. But admittedly, it's got Nicholas, Al <laughs> Nicholas Ali goes around the outside of Martin Edmonds that may have been breaching uh, track limits for sure, but it was exciting. What about uh, that thing that with the stuff and the other thing? Uh, to interject with no uh, quality commentary whatsoever. Oh, Edmonds gets the spot back and there's a big smoke trail there. Oh, it's Javi! No, Get him, Javi! Javi is spun in the car off, it looks like. Smoke him out. And lost a spot there to uh, Pajoto as well. And I believe that this is the finish of the race. Sometimes the checkered flag is a bit weird. But I believe we have a race winner in Caleb Gonzalez from Max uh, Max, Ra uh, Max Rossi. Martin Edmonds does get that podium ahead of Nicholas Ali, Sean Kenny, Marcelo Giordano, Richard Roche, Ariel Tony, And coming to the line is Max Simmons. Simon Simonsons. Simonson. He is trailing either Santa Clara or Juan Urena to the line. And takes it. And here is the 10th place man, recently promoted from the GT class to the prototype class, John Barker. And Wayne Hutchison bringing up 11th place with Mar Mauricio Delgado a lap down. Should get some results up here shortly. Hmm. Well, that's probably not a thing. I looked up Lance Hendrickson, and there is no TV credits to his name. Hmm. So, uh, or did I scroll? Oh, no, I just scrolled really fast. Never mind. Millennium. I think that's what it is. Yes, there's a show called Millennium he was in. It was created by Chris Carter, the creator of The X-Files. It ran for three years, and he played an ex-FBI agent, now a consultant, with the ability to see inside the minds of criminals, working for a mysterious organization known as the Millennium Group. I was meant to look into it, never did. Which probably goes for a lot of people, which is why it only ran for three years. Alright, race number two here, which was supposed to have a reverse grid, but it didn't, because someone made a mistake. Was that person probably Sean Kenny? No, it wasn't Sean. Can we blame him anyway? I mean, it's his server, I guess you can. Ha! 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 Nailed it. Here we go. Caleb Gonzalez leads the field away. Red light, red light, red light. Here we go. Womp, womp. Race number two here. As Martin Edmonds gets bullied a little bit wide there by Max Rossi. Sean Kenny going side by side with Nicholas Ali. Nick Ali faster like, than the around the corners. It looks like Ali has outlasted Sean Kenny on this one. Although somebody way off the track there. I believe that that is Sean Kenny, who has, uh, let's just say, lost his way on the map. <laughs> oh, 
Ali <laughs> remains on the tail of Martin Edmonds. So I that battle. The, uh, we need more power sliding. That's what we need. They're getting fair minute. Oh, Guido de Palma gets contact with. That is Tony Santa Clara, and then contact with Michael Magus. It's a rough lap for him. I'm in Sean favor. Kenny. Sean Kenny on the tail of Richard DeRoche. So lap one has not gone well for Sean. And behind him he has Ariel Zatoni and Marcelo Giordano. Hey, Guido, Guido De Palma still getting physical with Tony Santa Clara. Magus, Hughes, and Zifo Duran are in close company there. In fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh place actually with Salu Saluco that is in there. Saluco looking to rebound from a rough race one. Sergio Mengual also looking to rebound, and it is not going great for him at the moment. Well, then I would recommend probably uh, doing better things than that. Would be ideal. Tony Santa Clara in P2. This is all working out for uh, Joaquin Juan Urena, who is already way out ahead of Tony Santa Clara. Three seconds ahead after just two laps. Not even two laps. Uh, Guido de Palma sl slots back to the back of the pack. He may have had additional contact. It's been a rough day for that Argentinian driver who finished second in P in race one. And uh, race two is not really going his way. Mauricio Delgado has slipped to the back of the pack of the prototype. Uh, I'm wondering what happened with him because I, I, wa I watched the replay to try and figure it out. He pitted, which to me suggests he either damaged the engine at the start of the race because it wasn't running very well, or he put just like next to no fuel in the car. The engine damage seems to me the more likely culprit, but he can confirm or deny. Max Rossi on the tail of Caleb Gonzalez. What do you think, Byron? Can Caleb run away with this one again? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, Rosie seems to... Rosie's got some pace, and now that he's gotten away from the likes of Martin Edmonds and Nicholas Ali and Sean Kenny, I don't know. We'll see if he can give uh, Caleb a better fight this time. So I found uh, a post where, you know, Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger both have, like, custom uh, breathing masks and stuff. Pretty cool. Oh. Not bad. Michael Michael Magus taking second place in the GT category away from Tony Santa Clara. I get him. And Rossi is still on the tail of Caleb Gonzalez. Anyways, uh, you were saying about Sylvester, so? Yeah, so Arnold and Sylvester both have, like, custom, like, uh, Sylvester says keep punching, and it has, like, rocky silhouettes on it. And uh, Arnold's mask says we'll be back. It's cool. Mm. Uh, and then somebody posted up uh, Arnold uh, Austin three sixteen here on the Twitters. Oh, and so he's wearing somebody a friend of his made him a, a custom uh, Alabama Crimson Tide mask, uh, and he's basically made the ear straps too small, so it's cutting off circulation to his ears. So he's like, my ears are actually crimson since she made me a, a Clemson foot. Uh, she's a Clemson football fan. I figured she ribbed me on purpose. Mm, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, and then some cringe lord is just like commented, The mask goes against your reputation. Stay strong. Be a rebel. Do not conform. Cool mask, but strip off the communism. And Steve Austin just replied with, Shut up, dude. That's a solid reply. And the only reply I'd accept. Yeah. And then somebody posted up, uh, somebody went after Ice T for like, you know, saying everybody be safe do the right thing and he's like that's not very gangsta was the response and ice t came right back at him with somebody asking you bitch <laughs> <sighs> the, final, mask, uh, the mask issue is just fucking weird the uh, well the final thing is that somebody got a picture of trump actually wearing a mask and the top comment to that response was to be fair he is a bit of a mouth breather <laughs> 
Oh yeah, they've they've been they've been searing that photo around with like the Twitter people who are like anti-mask, and then when Trump wears one, it's like, oh, what a what a what a brave patriotic. stance for the for the patriotic duty of our country. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you, yes, we are the sheep, not you. Right. Not at all. <laughs> right. Well, I'm somebody got a picture with like a giant tattooed bodybuilder. It's probably Martin As Martin Asty Asp. I can't remember his name. Uh, but it's giant tattoo bodybuilder wearing a a, a a mask and it's like if this guy can wear a mask at a store, so can you. Yep. Yeah, the, I mean the mask is inconvenient. Like I was gonna get a, a blizzard from uh, from Dairy Queen on my way way home on the walk. Mm -hmm. Made a sign, you know, you must have a mask on. I didn't have a mask on, so I just walked past. There you go. Saved yourself like, some calories. That's. It's not difficult. <laughs> now, if I were a, uh, you know, a brave, patriotic, strong, conservative person, I would have thrown a temper tantrum. Correct. Because you were brave and patriotic and strong. Yep. <laughs> and not actually the opposite of any of those things. Mm-hmm. Not that we're making political statements here on ESR, but... Uh, Basically, if you disagree, you're a fucking moron. It's not even a. It's not even a political statement. It's a social statement. I don't want to smell your breath. Wear a mask, and you're ugly too. So wear a mask. So the, the, there you go. The the irony of people calling other people snowflakes and then getting upset because they have to wear a mask is not lost upon me. <laughs> Correct. In the meantime, Nicholas Ali, all over the back end of Martin Edmonds. This fight's been going on, like, basically all of race one and now into race two. So, interesting times ahead as traffic is coming into play here for the prototypes. It is still Gonzalez, Razi Edmonds, and Ali leading the way with Richard Deroche in fifth. So, Deroche is probably the most improved guy from race one right now. Up to fifth place. In the uh, GT category, it is one Urena, Santa Clara, Magus, Hughes, and Saluco. Your top five. Actually, I would say Saluco might be having the best day. Marcelo Giordano making his way past Ariel Zatoni. Zatoni is not taking your shit and gets Jesus. bounced into a BMW. Surprised that did not get reported because that was uh, questionable. We'll put it that way. Richard DeRoche gets past Nicholas Ali and there's contact. Sean Kenny will take them both. <laughs> John Kenny pulling the Tommy Dreamer with uh, Beulah McGillicuddy and uh, Wanale. <laughs> I'll take them both. I'm hardcore. Mm -hmm. Michael Magus trying to find a way back past Tony Santa Clara. He was ahead of him at one point. And as they head through Maggots and Beckett's, the most challenging section of the track. And uh, Magus gets a little bit too much grass there, and that will, at least for now, end the assault on second place. What about the assault on 14th place? Ooh, that's kind of on. Salute goes after Hughes. James Butler in the traffic there with the uh, blue flags flying. Nicholas... Ali chasing Marcelo Giordano for sixth position. So Ali's race has gone from potential podium to outside the top five. Nick Ali looks like a tree all stiff and gangly. I can do this all day. <laughs> As they come up to Sergio Mengual. And that played into Giordano's hands a little bit. Razi, Razi is still on Gonzalez's tail. Three tenths of a second, only difference. As they are going around Martin Hughes. And then next up will be Magus and uh, Santa Clara. Whoa! That was a little bit ugly. Razi had a run there, but unfortunately a blue flag car of Tony Santa Clara was there to kind of deny him the line he needed. So traffic working to the favor of Caleb Gonzalez. Bye -bye. 
So, uh, oh, Sean Kenny and Martin Hughes yeah. contact. Oh no! Oh yes. Sean Kenny with a terrible rejoin there. Well, not even rejoin. He just kind of backed into the it, racing line. I don't know what to, he was thinking. Uh, I don't think he had a choice, to be honest with you. As Mars, in the meantime, Maximilian, Maximiliano, Rossi. I don't know why I'm having a hard time with that. Right. And Caleb Gonzalez battle for the lead. Richard, no, Richard. Richard DeRoche, hard contact, rear wing gone. That is going to require a pit stop or a retirement for the Canadian. It looks like we've lost Sean Kenny and Ariel Zatoni in the meantime. Doesn't look like they are moving anymore at this point. Possibly Mauricio Delgado might also be out. Oh, Rossi Get gets into the back of Caleb. This is getting physical. Get him! Generally, damage to the back end is more important than damage to the front end, but Rossi is not on the chart, is his lost ground for the time being. It is now Gonzalez from Rossi, Edmonds, Ali, Giordano, Simpson, or not Simmons, not Simpson, Stipton. Barker, Hutchison, and DeRoche, the top nine. DeRoche, of course, dropping back with that heavy damage to his rear end, and there is the retirement. So eight, eight prototypes still running. In the GT category, it is one Urena, Santa Clara, Magus, Saluco, Pajoto, Duran, Mengual, Hughes, De Palma, who's having a really rough day down in ninth place. Butler, Nelson, and Perez Torres. Javi is at the back of the pack. Time running down here with a little over seven minutes to go here in race two. Also, uh, perhaps keep an eye out for uh, a highly informative new racing podcast that we are currently developing, uh, which will only include complete facts and nothing but the truth. Yes. Let's see what Rosie could do to catch back up to Caleb Gonzalez, or if either car has suffered damage from that relatively hard contact. Not much else happening on the circuit right now. Saluko and Magus are kind of close together. And Hutchison is on the, uh, the back end of John Barker here. That's about it, really. You can do it. Letting everyone enjoy the sounds of the Daytona prototypes. The delicate sounds of thunder. Y'all y'all be sure to go on down to silverstetson.co.uk. Why do they why do the British still do that? Why can't it just be dot uk or dot com? Why do why do they always do the dot co dot uk? Honestly I have no idea. British people are weird. I hear they're banning spoons. Hmm. Seems less than ideal. I'm not in favor of it. How else are you supposed to spread your jam and your crumpet? With a knife. Banned already. Mm. With a fork? Nope, too many pointy bits banned. <laughs> There is a recommended video on my feed here. Trump wanted to sell Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. That would no be one awkward. Wants, no one wants to buy Puerto Rico, but okay. <laughs> Although they don't really own Puerto Rico, so... I'm saying, even if they even if they were in the position to sell Puerto Rico, who's buying an island after it's been hit with a hurricane? I mean... I might. 
just need those lottery people to get their shit together and give me my money. <laughs> True enough. Wayne Hutchison trying to run down John Barker still. Battle for seventh place in the prototype uh, series. And I think I can confirm that Mauricio Delgado is out of the race. So we lost Richard Roche, Mauricio Delgado, Sean Kenny, and Ariel Zatoni. Mauricio Shogun Delgado. He should take up that name. It's a solid name. Correct. I wonder what happened to Ninja who I'm assuming he's teaching. Uh, I believe he is teaching at the Shoot a Box Academy, actually. Shoot the Box. Ah, Ninja. Chronically underrated. Yeah. Um, oh, Martin Edmonds has picked up second place. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Max Rossi is out. Dang. We have lost Rossi, so the chances of keeping Caleb Gonzalez from the double, I think, probably has died with him. Well, you know... Probably shouldn't have done that. Whoa, Mauricio or Marcelo Giordano and Nicholas Aldi getting a little physical. Giordano hangs on to it. Aldi retains third place. This is kind of an underrated battle that we haven't seen a lot of. Giordano's been catching up to Aldi for some time and is looking to make that last podium step. I think he's being more emphatic than that and making it a podium stomp. That was a bit stomp. Uh, okay, so it looks like Delgado is still going. Just overtook Javier Perez Torres. So that's interesting. I'm interested. Either that or Javier is out of the race, but that gap is changing, so... I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye out for the Visit Florida car if it is still circulating the track. It would make sense, though, if his engine indeed is knackered. Then uh, that might be the problem, basically. He's running out there with a, a bit of a dead-boned engine and just trying to salvage what he can. Was this about a wishbone suspension? It's a dead-bone, not wishbone. <laughs> eh, potato, tomato. All right, well, we are into the final lap here at this point, I think. Gonzalez, Edmonds, Ali, Giordano, Simps, uh, Simmons, Barker, and Hutchison, your surviving prototypes. James Butler rejoins from and off there. Juan Urena, Santa Clara, Magus, Saluco, Pajoto, Duran, Mangual, Hughes, De Palma, Butler, Nelson, and the possibly running uh, Javier Perez Torres as well as Mauricio Delgado might still be out there. As we come down to the line here, less than a minute to go. Can Giordano take this last lap and put a fight on Nicholas Ali for that last podium spot? And just ahead of them is Martin Edmonds, but Caleb Gonzalez is gone. Although the gap is dropping from 13 seconds to 7. Problems for Caleb Gonzalez? Can we get that on screen right now, please? No. That is the car that he would be running, but that is uh, Wayne Hutchison's. Uh, okay, so it looks like the gap is growing again. Might have just been an off for Gonzalez or something, but he lost lost a lot of time. Giordano and Ali still squabbling. That was either De Palma or, uh, or Nelson off the track in the background. Is it uh, full Nelson? Nah, just, just Dave. Three-quarter Nelson? Three-quarter Nelson. One-eighth Nelson? I, see, that's what I need. That's that's going to be my new wrestling gimmick. Just all the Half. different fractions of Nelsons. Half Nelson suplex. Oh, contact between Hutchison. Or not Hutchison. That was a uh, that was Gonzalez who got into contact there. But the race Gonzalez. may be over for him. I think so. Here comes Saluco to the line. P4 for Alexander Saluco. Give him a, a hearty chest thump, because I can't give him a uh, a round of applause. <laughs> Press to talk. 
is a bitch. Presley Talk is sometimes a bitch. Especially when I do want to do wrestling chants and do the clap clap. Mm. Fuck James him up, but Butler. Fuck him up. James Butler coming home in ninth place. Feels like that could have been a lot more for James Butler if he kept it a little more clean, but... Uh, well, he's a he butler. Was, he's supposed to keep it clean. He, he did say that he was having some troubles with the Porsche and was thinking about finally trading into another car. They'll have to pay the price. Please. I hear he's going to be driving the Daihatsu. That would be interesting. And Zifo Duran. Talk about talk about a guy who had a bit of an up and down day. Zifo Duran. Hell of a first race. Race two has not gone his way. Looks like he's going to come home in P7. So it is Gonzalez, Edmonds, Ali on the prototype podium with Giordano, Sim, uh, Simmons, Barker, and Hutchison making it to the end as well. And then in the GT category, it is one Urena ahead of Santa Clara. Magus on the podium ahead of Saluco. Peugeot is the top non-BMW. Mangual and Duran on the on the, on the uh, lead lap. And then it is Hughes, De Palma, Butler, Nelson, Perez, Torres, and Delgado also getting to the end. Out of the race, Rossi, DeRoche, Kenny, Rossi. No, <laughs> Rossi and Rossi. This is, this is not going to get less confusing. I bet so Tony and I, with Ross. And I believe John Peachy did not actually start the second race after his DQ in race number one. So quick update on the standings uh, heading away from the first round. It is in the prototype category. Caleb Gonzalez leading by 15 points over Martin Edmonds. Nicholas Ali, Mar Marcelo Giordano, and Max Simmons rounding off the top five. And in the GT4 category, it is Joaquin Juan Urena, Tony Santa Clara, Michael Magus, Guido De Palma, and Zifo Duran. Tuxedo Duran, your top five. Tuxedo Turban. Uh, the next round of this championship will take place. Oh, we got like another hour of commentary we could do on practice. At, at Spa Franc or Champ. Uh, Spa will be the enduro uh, format, I do believe. I would like clarification. Which one of the three is it? Is it Spa, Frank, or Sean? It is all three. Oh my, it's like a, the, the Christian thing. Yes. Wow, but racing. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. All right, with that, we will send you to your regular scheduling program now. And uh, upcoming this week, we've got 3D speed action from Monza. And I believe the Spa Frankershaw round, round. Yep, I am correct. As well as uh, Zanfort for ACC GT3 action. Get ready for that. Make sure you get sandwich at Zanfort. 